Welcome to Elements of Community, a podcast about discovering and exploring the elements of community. I am Lucas Root, and each week we talk with a community leader about what makes their community thrive and bring value to both the leaders and the members. Join me as we unpack the magic of the elements of community. Elements of Community. Zach, thank you so much for joining me. Can you lead off by telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So, yeah, my name's Zach Hammer. Uh, I am the, the the founder. I call myself the chief bottle washer at uh, Real Estate Growth Hackers. Uh you know what where where that comes from ultimately uh so the title is basically i believe that i, I believe in, in in servant leadership and and as the founder of uh real estate growth hackers the the chief bottle washer i i i ultimately get done whatever needs to be done is kind of the uh the idea there uh where real estate growth hackers came from is a a really long journey i uh i actually started my career life actually uh, uh, seeking to be a pastor. I went to Bible college and uh, I'm actually a trained preacher, uh, but ultimately felt felt called in different directions. I, uh, I dabbled in uh, some MLM stuff, which led to learning a lot of marketing. Uh, learning marketing, I found a real passion for uh, and ended up taking a job as a uh, marketing director for a real estate team uh, while I was there. You know, we doubled in business every year that I was there. I 5 x their lead flow and cut, the, cut their cost in, per lead in half. Uh, but I am a horrible employee. <laughs> I'm an uh, entrepreneur at heart. Uh, and so I, I set out leveraging the information that I learned that I learned there, that I that I developed there uh, with agents all across the country. And that that's where Real Estate Growth Hackers came from. Uh, it uh, it shifted and changed over, over the years from saying yes to any and every project that sort of came up into uh, ultimately today, I'm, I'm more focused focused in uh, teaching and training uh, in order to help uh, enable people to do the the, the kinds of uh, things that we learned and developed over the years. So that's uh, that's kind of where we are today. I love it. So we got we got a, a nice little chat before we got started and uh, we got to come up with a tagline for your community. You want to share that? I, I, forgive me. I, I am a uh, horrible with like specific scri scripted stuff, but, uh, uh, but yeah, so what we're, what we look to do is we, we're, we are helping enable real estate professionals, uh, to achieve their goals and dreams, especially, uh, in light of the, uh, you know, the, the, the technology that's coming into the space that, that essentially seeks to say that the real estate agent has no value, right? The real estate profession has no, no value. We're, we're standing up and saying, uh, where are we valuable? Uh, how can we get that get that out to the market effectively, and how can we, you know, still re really provide value to the market that needs help with uh, real estate transactions and and their real estate life? Mm, I love it. May I may I offer a a line for you? Yeah, absolutely. Real estate professionals okay. seeking okay. their zone of genius. Real estate professionals seeking their zone of genius. I like it. Mm. I, I I think that's I think that's fantastic. I love it. Um. Tell me more about the community. Yeah, so you know, my my community is comprised of a lot of people. I've I I have this uh, this general belief that if you if you have a pretty clear focus on who who you're seeking to help, right, a, a, a very uh, clear and direct target, uh, that often that 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 information applies to a wider group of people as well, right? So uh, it's actually a a trick that I learned uh, when when preaching. Uh, if you want to make everyone feel like you're making eye contact with them when you're when, when you're up on stage and you're you're speaking to them, uh, what you do is you don't you don't look at a group of people, right? You look at individuals. You look at one person and you make very clear direct eye contact. But what's interesting is everybody around them feels like you're looking directly at them as well. Whereas if you just look at kind of a general group of people, a great trick. Yeah. If, if, if you're just looking at a general group of people, nobody feels like you're making eye contact with them. Right. And so nobody feels like they're actually being paid attention to. And so when you do the same thing with your, with your marketing or with your targeting, the, the same idea can, can, uh, you know, can happen. So, uh, where I focus most of my attention and effort is in helping the real estate agent in in being successful with their marketing defining uh who they're looking to reach like you said what their zone of genius is and and getting that message out uh, effectively to the market and in doing so 
Uh, I also find that that information is really helpful to other people as well. Uh, you know, mortgage professionals, title folks, uh, software companies that serve the real estate space often find value mm -hmm. in connecting with the kind of information that I put out. Uh, and so mm -hmm. the community is larger than than who I am, you know, maybe directly focused on creating content and, and help and training for. Uh, and, and it's really any of those real estate professionals that uh, that are kind of in this in this current, uh, uh, you know, in this current world of, of, of real estate. I love it. That's fantastic. The, that trick of like making actual eye contact is fantastic. That's the opposite of what I've heard before. Right. But it makes so much sense. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and it's it's literally it's something that you could test. You get up on stage and and ask people. You do the trick of saying, hey, let me make eye contact, eye contact with one specific person. And uh, who who thinks I was looking at them versus if you look at a group of people who thinks I was looking at them. And yeah, you can you can run the test. It's kind of an interesting thing to see the result of. <laughs> It, it makes perfect sense. So, um, you're you're a trained preacher. You've built a, at least one really successful community. So you have some thoughts on you know sort of what makes a community effective. Can you tell me what is it that makes a community effective? Yeah. So there there's a there's a couple of things that I'd say go into that. There's a uh, have you ever heard of <sighs> It's funny. I like I. I forget the specifics of how this is described. Nearly every every time I describe it, but uh, there, there's something called I believe the one sentence uh, copywriting course. If I recall, I, I think that's what it's what it's described as. Uh, have you heard of that concept before? No. Okay. It, I mean, it makes sense. I get it. I think. But... Yeah. Fair, fair enough. So, and I I always forget the exact specifics, even though it's just one sentence. I, I like I said, I I'm, I'm not good at generally remembering you know, a script. Uh, but one of the key ideas that they talk about is like people, people will always rally behind those who uh, throw stones at their enemies, who excuse, uh, excuse their mistakes, who uh, basically like, like there's a few ideas here that if, if you could achieve those ideas in, in your marketing and your, in your copywriting, then you align yourself with a group of people. So if you understand who somebody's, uh, who somebody's enemies are and, and help them to fight those enemies. Right, that's a great way to bring together a group of people that that all rally behind a common enemy. Right, if you if you understand the common uh, you know troubles and strife that somebody goes through, and, and and you help them to get past that, you help to lift them up out of it, and you help them to understand like there are times there are times where there's a lot that's stacked against you. And when you make that clear, when you shine the light on it, and you say, hey, there is a lot of reason why you may not have been successful so far. Right? There's a lot of things that come into this that, that hold you back, that I want to help you get past, that I want to help enable you to, uh, to move forward through. Uh, that those kinds of things can actually really help uh, to bring together a group of people who have those same those same enemies, those same, the, those same troubles, those same kinds of goals. Uh, and, and bringing together people uh, under that same kind of direction is, uh, is often to me what community is about, right? It's a, it's a group of people coming together, uh, trying to move in, in, you know, forward in, in a, in a pretty consistent direction. Uh, and as a result, they, they have the same troubles, enemies, and, uh, and those kinds of ideas. That sounds like, um, a common purpose, right? And a project, right? Cause you're fighting a battle, right? And that's, right. that's not just a purpose. That's a project, right? It, it, it's really it's really making me think here like um and and how do you just just out of curiosity like how, how do you decide which stones to throw and which enemies to choose like there are lots of different people that have enemies that want to fight a battle yeah you know i i think i think the reality of that is that there's a there's a certain degree of of you know, introspection and experience that comes into play on this. I think uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, part of the reason why I work with real estate professionals is because I've worked in the real estate industry, right? Like I have, I have uh, skin in the game. I've seen, uh, I, I've, I've seen the value that having a real estate agent can bring to a transaction, and I can envision uh, where the problems come if you try and get rid of them completely, right? Uh, and yet, there's also a balance here of. Uh, you know, I try as much as possible to be an unbiased person. I think it's nearly impossible, but I try uh, to be an unbiased person. And so I, I also, uh, you know, admit the, the places where 
you know, the real estate industry can be improved, right? And where we where we can adapt and can change and and can grow. And so, uh, you know, looking at, you know, looking at this idea of uh, of, of of trying to be effective in there, uh, you know, brings me to the brings me to this point of of, of trying to find that balance, right? Of being able to say. Uh, where where are the real enemies? Where are the where are the people that we can look at that I feel like they have it wrong? The people that are saying you're you are worthless. You are you are not valuable anymore in the market, right? I think that's wrong. And yet still looking at the criticism and trying to say where where is the thread of truth in that too though, right? Where are we getting this wrong? Where can we improve and where where can we uh where can we adapt? And so in terms of finding those enemies, that's it's 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 sort of uh, wrestling with those ideas of of saying uh, where do I believe that people have it wrong? Uh, but maybe what are the elements that they have right that we need to adjust and adapt to uh, and then reinform our marketing and and, uh, and our vision for who we are as well? Awesome. And again, you, you, you speak directly to real estate agents, but your, your community actually encompasses more than just real estate agents. Your community is brokers and mortgage and, you know, software. Right. Correct. Correct. If, if you're picking a fight on behalf of the agents, how do these other people decide that they want to get involved? You know, it, it, uh, it tends to be, uh, you know, companies and people that, that share a similar vision, right? So uh, if, if we're working with software companies, the kind of software companies that tend to make sense are the software companies that are looking to equip agents. Right. If we're if we're if we're if we're working with uh, mortgage professionals, it's uh, it's the same thing. It's 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 people who see the real estate transaction as a, uh, you know, as as more than just their siloed part of the of the industry. They see it as a, a bigger process that that real estate professionals in general are helping uh, helping people through. And so they need the help of the real estate agent just as much as the real estate agent needs the help of the mortgage professional. Right. So it's, you know, everybody's business. Uh, you know the, the the concept of a, a rising tide raises all boats, right? They see the the reality of we're all in this process together. How can we lift each other up? Uh, you know, at the at the same time, where helping the real estate agent ultimately helps helps the mortgage professional, um, and being able to you know impact the community through that kind of symbiotic relationship that happens there. Yeah, I love it. I get it. Um, how did you end up in the role of being the community leader? I, I get I get the story. You're an entrepreneur. Um, you are a horrible employee. You have some really great experience with helping people engage with the market, right? That's that's what marketing is, right? Creating engagement. Right. How, how did you end up being a community leader for this? You know, I, the uh, there, uh, it, there, it wasn't... there are just so many other ways that you could have gone as a as an entrepreneur, but this is the one that drew you in yeah so i mean it's it's a it's a combination of things it's uh you know in the in the same way of saying you know part of what i'm doing is helping helping to throw stones at the enemies right so part of that is that having having been in the battle <laughs> having seen where the industry is going uh there, there's a little bit of like a a, a personal stake in this of saying uh, like i I, I see the battle that we're facing and the question is do I do I step up and try and enable this group of people that I've seen value in do I step up and and try and help them or do I take my focus elsewhere right it, uh, the the basic idea of you know if if not me then who else right do I do I believe that there's somebody else that's better uh, to, to help this industry and there's a there's a certain degree of of maybe hubris in this, but I, I think there are aspects that I bring to the table that I think I can help this group of people maybe better than they're currently being helped, and and so I you know I step up with that belief, saying let's test that, let let's see that if that's the case, because um, I won't I don't really know until I try, right? I don't really know until I until I try and help this uh, this community of people and see if I'm actually making uh, you know a meaningful difference. Uh, but I do have some inklings of, uh, of why that, that, why that's the case. Right. So, uh, the, the passion for the community itself, but, uh, further when I have had the opportunity to, to teach and train and, and kind of rally around this community, I get the kind of feedback that the stuff that I'm doing is making a real difference in their life. And that's part of what continues to, uh, you know, pull me back in to, to keep helping. Mm -hmm. Amazing. 
I'm, I'm hearing a couple of different elements there. So um, you, you, because you were involved in it, you had some really significant success ahead of time. Right. You had the language of the people that you're talking to down. You already knew exactly right. how they want to yeah. be spoken to. You already knew exactly what to say to catch their attention. Right. You were doing that really well. So you have, you have the language. Um, you, it, it's clear to me at least that you share, uh, you share a purpose, right? These guys right. are, are under attack and, and I don't think they should be, or, or maybe they should be, but I don't think that they should fail. Right. Maybe they right. should be under attack, but they shouldn't fail. Right. So that you have a shared purpose. Right. Um, right. and, and then it, it sounds to me like there's some value to you in being the leader, um, which is similar to the value they get. Right. Cool. Um, would you say that those three sort of elements are what makes an effective community leader? That they have they have the language. Right. Uh, right. They they share the purpose and they have some they have some shared value. Yeah, I, I'd say I'd say you know, uh, looking looking at kind of the basic idea of when when is leadership effective uh in the sense of uh, have, you, have you ever heard uh heard the concept um a, a leader requires followers right because otherwise without a leader having followers it's just a person going for a walk right you have to <laughs> you have to have people that you actually are influencing that that want to to follow along with what what you're saying and so yeah i think i think you're exactly right i think there has to be uh there has to be that shared language there has to be that shared purpose right otherwise why would people why would people follow you if you're if you're not taking them to where they want to go right and that's that you know that's where the where i would say that that purpose fits in um and yeah being able to 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 step back and 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 look and say, ultimately, a, a group of people working together uh, to to achieve anything, they they have to have that 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 purpose that uh, you know that that shared language because because yeah things things in the community if for it to be a community they have they have to be different than than somewhere else right otherwise it's not a community otherwise it's not its own thing it's just a group of people or something right it's uh, uh there has to be something different that set, sets it apart from you know, where you know I'm either part of the community or I'm not, right? And and yeah, those uh those elements definitely add up to me to uh, uh to 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 make the difference for that. And and in terms of you know being able to just be a leader of a community, uh, uh understanding those things, having having that common alignment, uh you know definitely makes sense. I think I think it's an interesting thing. I don't think I don't think every community ne necessarily needs uh like a, a, a single leader, but uh. You know, it, it, ten, it tends to it tends to be uh, that unless somebody decides to lead, nobody does. <laughs> um, and uh, you you might get multiple leaders at some point, but uh, uh, but yeah, community doesn't just happen on its own. I don't think. I think you you have somebody who has a heart and a passion to do something that kind of creates that vision in, in other people as well. Mm. Now you 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 mentioned that you actually threw some stones yourself. Um, do you believe that a community leader has to be there on the front line, throwing some stones and, and fighting the enemy? You know, I think it's, I, I, I guess you don't necessarily have to. I think it's a lot harder if you haven't. Um, I think the, I, I think there might be, there might be personality types that make a, make a bit of, bit of a difference. Like how, how much empathy do you have for another person's situation? I think would make a lot of, uh, a lot of difference in that. So whether or not you've participated in the battle yourself, uh, if you can put yourself in the shoes of another person that, that might allow you to, uh, to lead another community, um, you know, it, that, that you don't have that personal experience in the battle yourself, if that makes sense. Um, and, and I, I'd say there's there's probably a degree of that for me, right? So while uh, so my experience comes as being the marketing director, and yet I'm not a real estate agent, right? So I'm not I'm not on the on the direct line of actually doing real estate transactions, but I have I, I, I'm closer uh, to the community than say some person who just chooses real estate because they think it's going to make the most money or something, right? Uh, you know, like I've 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 been involved uh, on the front lines in that way. Uh, you know, directly working alongside the people who are trying to do the deals, right? Um, 
but uh but yeah so i i i think it's not necessary i think it definitely helps i think it's probably one of the quickest ways to be able to develop that empathy and that shared language and and really be able to to hone that in hmm. now i'm wondering what what would it look like to to have a community an effective community with a leader or or multiple leaders that that did not participate in the project right so fighting the enemy right i'm wondering what that would look like yeah i think i think well let me let me put it this way i think i think ultimately and i don't know i could be wrong because yeah same thing i don't know i don't know exactly what it would look like i i think i think you don't necessarily have to have to come into the community having already fought the the the, the battle if that makes sense i i don't think there's any way around fighting the battle at some point right like if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna lead you have to be part of whatever battle is going on whatever the purpose is uh otherwise what are you what are you doing right like uh if 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 you if you don't have any level of a uh, of of caring about the purpose caring about the direction that you're going if that if it, it's if it just doesn't matter to you then uh, yeah i think you'd i think you'd really struggle uh to to be able to lead and i think the way that you develop that 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 care is by participating uh, but I, what i would so what i would say is there's a difference between you could come into a community not having been part of that battle before and learn <laughs> through the community and, Trial by and fire. yeah exactly uh and then and then over time you you develop that you know uh, that 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 bond amongst your fellow warriors or whatever right uh that uh that, that inevitably would happen but you may come into it pretty green and i think that's possible um i think how readily you're able to uh how readily you're able to adapt and grow and learn through that scenario is is probably going to be that that uh that that empathy and how much you're actually participating as well mm. yeah i get it um it sounds like we got a lot to talk about on sort of the project or the battle that the community engages in. Um, can you talk to me more about the battle, the project, the battle that real estate growth hackers engages in? Yeah. So one of the one of the biggest things that I think uh, currently holds real estate agents back is that we're we're kind of at the you know at, at, at the the precipice. Actually, we're already in the middle of a major shift that's happening in real estate in general, right? It's, it's been going on uh, for a while. It's, uh, it's, it's hitting a bit of a groundswell, I think, in terms of, of the impact of it. Uh, and that, that shift is the level of, of attention and tech that's coming into the real estate space, right? So before, before we, we had, uh, you know, like, like a Zillow in the market, uh, making real estate, you know, listings just readily available to everybody in the U.S. to be able to search through and find on their own. Uh, before that, the the real estate agent was the keeper of this knowledge, right? Like they had the secret knowledge. The only way that you could get it was to go through the real estate agent, and that that isn't actually necessarily that great of a thing. I or, think there's a lot or of do good. A lot of driving. Yeah, exactly. I think I think there's a lot of good that came from that information being democratized, right? If if all if all that the value that you bring is that I have the list that you don't get to have outside of me, there's not a lot of value that's being brought there, right? Um, and, and so there's a lot of good that I think has come from some of this technology and information coming into play. Uh, but what we what we have is that there, there's a lot of other things that happen in a real estate transaction, right? There's there's complexity in terms of making the decision of really what might be a, a good home or a good situation for a person. Uh, there's the the complexity of dealing with like the finances of it. Uh, there's a lot that could go wrong still in terms of. Uh, you know, uh, problems with the home that that may be hard to detect, or dealing with the negotiation process. Anyway, there's there's a lot of chaos that happens in a real estate transaction that people miss, um, and so bridging this gap of the market is starting to see. Like my first thing that I deal with is just looking for homes, and I could do that without a real estate agent, right? I could go to Zillow, I could start finding yeah. homes that I think are, are a good option, and I, and I would argue kind of, these days most people do. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The, I mean, the average real estate agent isn't being consulted uh, until the person has probably already found the home that they that they either think that they want or that they at least want to look at. Right. Um, yeah. That's that's the the trend at this point. Um, and so what's happening is that I, I think people are throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Right. They there is an aspect of the real estate 
you know, real estate agent's old job that isn't really all that useful anymore. Uh, and, and they're missing the other parts where the agent has been very valuable, which is kind of being the, the, the wise counselor in this process of saying, okay, I understand your goals. I understand your needs. Let's let's make sure that the transaction that's happening for you actually accomplishes those effectively for you. Because it's really hard for technology to do that, uh, to to be able to navigate that right now, at least. Um, and so, uh, in terms of like where where we exist and what what I'm doing is I is I'm trying to I'm trying to equip real estate agents to be able to effectively market to find the people in the current scenario, right? Where they're not just getting people coming to them automatically because they happen to have the, the you know, the the tome of knowledge, right? Because that's gone. Uh, so how do you how do you find the people so you could still help them effectively, ultimately actually helping the consumer to get a better end result than they would without the real estate agent? Uh, and in order to do that, you need to, you need to up your game on marketing. You used to not have to market so much. Now you do. Now you need to, to be there on the front end. Uh, finding people, helping to get your message out there and influence them so that they know that when the time is right, they do need to talk to you in order to get the thing that they want, right? Which is a, a transaction that that ends up with the uh, with the home that they want, with the least amount of hassles and, and the least headache, right? Like they want that and everybody wants that. And as yeah. of yet, I haven't I seen, that. yeah, I haven't seen a, a better way to get there than leveraging the real estate agent. And, and all of the technology that comes into play hasn't really helped with that. You still need the person who can kind of sort through the chaos that is a real estate transaction to help you through that. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and and so we're both, you know, we're, we're both helping the real estate agent to be able to, yeah, achieve their goals and dreams. But at the same time, like I, I you know, I mentioned this at the beginning, I believe all of these things should be a win-win. If it's not what's best for the consumer, then I wouldn't want to do it either. So it's, it's ultimately got to be both good for the real estate agent and for the consumer, uh, you know, in, in order to do that. And so leveraging, leveraging technology, leveraging good marketing in order to get that message out there to both help the agents and help the consumers to ultimately have a good end result is, uh, is, is kind of what that process looks like. I love that. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> now I want to go buy a house. I'm like, what, what, where do I say? get, get, get me a real estate agent right now. Let's do this. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and, and the key, the key is so just like just like you mentioned, not every real estate agent has that same view, right? Like there there are a lot of real estate agents who are still kind of in the corner grumbling about Zillow, and and you know bemoaning days gone by, wishing that they were still in the situation where they didn't have to. They didn't have to think about some of these things. They're not stepping up. They're not trying to better their service and make sure that they're actually providing real value to, to the consumer. So uh, it's it's kind of you know when when we talk about who you know who is part of this community uh, and who are we who are we battling against? We're kind of battling on both sides in a way, right? We're battling. There is some you know uh, some really uh, faulty belief that the real estate agent isn't necessary but from the industry itself there's people who believe that there's you know there's no value for the technology either that that i should just keep getting paid what i was getting paid before for the same amount of work uh even though what's available in the market has drastically changed what a real estate agent needs to provide in order to still be valuable right uh and, and me so, as a consumer exactly and so so i you know, i seek to to work with the people who have that same vision of I, I realize that we need to be actually providing something of value in order to justify getting paid anything, right? As a real estate professional, I need to provide something that's of real value to you, the consumer, right? Uh, and uh, and at the same time, uh, being confident in the reality of, it's not like I've lost all my value because Zillow exists, because technology exists, right? So where is that value and how do I communicate that? How do I find those people? I love it, yeah. That's it's funny. Do you think all communities have a pinch like you do, where there's 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 the old way of thinking and there's a battle on that side, and then there's the, the sort of hyper minimalist new way of thinking and a battle on that side, and you're sort of pinched. You know, I I don't I don't know if it would be all communities or not, but I'd say I, I'd say yeah, I'd say probably right. There there the the way that humans work, we tend to. Um, you know, we tend to operate with that whole 50 shades of gray sort of idea. So if you feel like, if you feel like there's somewhere in the middle, 
uh, that you feel like is the right answer, then that means that you're going to have people who are to the extremes on either end, right? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I guess I guess what I would say is that the communities that don't have that are probably at the very far extreme of, of one end or the other, right? Uh, but uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think in general, uh, yeah, I think in general, it's it, there's probably always some level of uh, the old guard and the new guard in a way, you know, uh, and that there's some blend in between. That that makes me think that's the sort of the pinch. So um, I talk about the, the you talk about the battle and I talk about the project and I've equated those and I, I think we sort of agree. Um, is it appropriate to say that every community has more than one project? I don't know if every community has more than one project. Um, well, I, I guess it depends on how you how you define how you define it. So you know, going with uh, going with the battle or, or like a war metaphor, uh, you probably have. Uh, if if the if if you have the overall war being like the the key objective, right, which might be uh, you know to come out of this thing uh, as unscathed as possible and defeating the opponent, right? Uh, in that war, you're probably going to have a number of skirmishes and and individual battles that actually take place along the path and the process to get to that end result. So you might have uh, you know. Yeah, like like you said, multiple pro projects along the way that equate to that ultimate, uh, you know, bigger picture uh, that that you're seeking to achieve. So I, I'd say, almost 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 definitely, uh, you probably have multiple projects depending on depending on how you define it. Uh, you you brought up some really great points that that not just had me thinking now, but they're going to have me thinking for a while, and I'm really looking forward to like the way this all sort of comes together for me. So thank you very much. Um. Is there something that I should have asked you but didn't? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, I think I think the way the way that these conversations tend to go, I, you know, for for sake of for sake of how this how this works, I think there are probably times where that happens, right? Where where somebody has a uh, a, a, a key insight or a key idea that just doesn't naturally come out through the through the source of the conversation but uh, i i believe more often than not uh that uh, whether it's the right way of believing this or whether it's just the way that i only know how to uh i i sort of trust the process in these kinds of things right if something was important enough to come out it's probably going to come out uh if if something wasn't I'm, big enough i'm similar yeah if, if something's a big enough deal uh that i feel like it really matters to the to the crux of this conversation uh then it's probably going to naturally you know come out uh, and, and and if not it's it's either it's either the refinement that happens over time or or, or whatnot and just there's a fairly natural process i think to to these sort of things of, of having the conversation and seeing seeing what services what comes up consistently what doesn't um and so uh, to answer your question, I don't have any specifics. I don't have anything else that I would say, hey, you, you missed this idea or, or, or something like that. I think uh, I think the the questions led the conversation in a good way for us to, uh, you know, come to this with, uh, you know, uh, it, it, at least for me, especially I didn't come to it with an agenda. Right. I, I just uh, tried to authentically answer the, the, the questions and, and dive into the conversation naturally. So. Uh, so, yeah, no, I don't have uh, I don't have any other points that I think you should have asked. Um, actually, you just raised a point that I absolutely should have asked, and it was a fantastic one. Um, you just raised the point of trusting the process, and I'm wondering if we cycle back to what makes an effective community leader, if trusting the process is a necessary attribute to that community leader, someone who's willing to trust the process. Yeah, I mean, shoot, and to, to some extent, uh, defining that process and, and understanding if there is a process uh it, it probably matters right in some in some communities maybe they're uh you know just understanding that uh that there there is uh there is a bit of a of a of a grinding that could happen that may not feel that may not feel good always but is is necessary for the you know the forging of an idea and the refinement of, of thoughts and processes that having people you know yeah I, i'd say i'd say there's some good ideas there so like uh like as a for instance you know um no real estate agent is going to uh is going to say hey i'm so glad that uh zillow came into the market and made my life 10 times harder 
right? Like they're not going to say that. And yet, I don't know, there might be a few that would say that. There, uh, there but, might be a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, but the reality is that that uncomfortableness of what Zillow has done in the market is likely what ultimately helps to refine the real estate profession to step up and either either level up or get out, right? And uh, and so there's an uncomfortableness there that is part of the process that that inevitably, as as people grow, as communities develop, that uh, that 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 grinding and that battle that happens is, I think, what what refines the community to be better uh, over time. So. Uh, uh, so yeah, I, I, and and you're right. I think I think there's a certain element of people, uh, especially today. We we sort of exist in a world where it's like everybody is constantly seeking to be perpetually happy, and I don't think that's realistic, right? I don't I don't think I, I don't think it's it's you know achievable to to never have down times and never have moments of uncomfortability where you're where you're kind of sometimes you might be laboring through something, right? Uh, and so, yeah, trusting in the process might be understanding that and saying like, there are gonna be times uh, in in doing something that's worthwhile where you where you have those uncomfortable moments that uh, uh, that make you question if it's worthwhile or that, uh, uh, you know, or at least make make you question if you're up to the challenge. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I, there's probably more to trusting the process than that, but the, that, that's at least what comes to mind to me. I, th I think there is a, there is some power in that in, in knowing what actually goes on in in the work of community amazing that that was fantastic thank you, <laughs> you got it. is it is it common does the community also have to trust the process you know i think uh the way the way that i define it is that the process is going to happen regardless um and if if you don't have a certain level of being comfortable with some of the awkwardness of that process. The only thing that changes isn't necessarily the end result of where things go or head, as much as how do you feel about it along the way, right? If you if you know and expect, well, I mean, yeah. you pointed out, uh, if you don't have followers, you're not a leader, right? Right? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I would say having having people uh, having people trust that. I I I. I, I I guess the way that I would describe it is the is the bigger concept, right? Of like, if if real estate agents, you know, in my community don't don't understand that things have changed for you know for consumers, right? Like there there is meaningful difference there that might be uncomfortable for the agent, and if they don't understand that, they have to now wrestle with that, and they have to figure out how to deal with that, and that's part of the process. Then what's going to happen is the industry is going to move on without them. And, and so I think you're right. I think for a community to exist, uh, for those agents to still be in business, for that to happen, then, then yeah, they have to trust the process and trust that, uh, that, that they're going to have to, they're going to have to work and change. They're going to have to develop. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'd say, I'd say for the community to exist, I, I guess what I would say is, is, uh, kind of looking at it from the bigger level of the people are still going to exist. Real estate is still going to happen. There's the question yeah. of whether or not you're going to be part of it. Right. And, uh, yeah. and and I say there that that would be, yeah, where we're sort of the the process and paying attention to it would matter both from the community and the leader perspective of if you're going to stay involved, you got to you got to you got to be part of that process and you can't just bow out. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you going down that road with me. Yeah, you got it. It's interesting. <laughs> so you you sold me on on being a member of this group and I'm not even in real estate. Where do, where do people find you? Yeah. So, uh, our website is realestategrowthhackers.com. That's probably the best place to, uh, to dive in and, and see everything else we have. You know, we have a Facebook group. I do lots of webinars. I send out emails and let people know what we're up to. Uh, but realestategrowthhackers.com is going to be the best place to start. Awesome. Awesome. I, I hope everybody goes and checks you out. That was, that was an amazing uh, conversation. Thank you so much. You got Any it. parting words? Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what, uh, what you're up to. Uh, I'm excited to, to, to develop this. I mean, the reality, uh, you know, I, I think about things largely through the aspect of, of marketing and, uh, and like getting a message out there, but, uh, as a, as a general business process, one of the things that has always, uh, always been very clear to me is that 
the the key work of any business is being able to develop some sort of tribe or some sort of community that rallies behind whatever you're up to because if you can't do that you don't have a business right you might you might have a product you might make a few sales but you don't have like a real business there there has to be a group of people who want what you are putting out who want what you're up to uh, in order for this thing to continue to exist right and so the work of of community and community development i uh, i think is you know is 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 at the heart of really any successful business right and and uh and so i'm very interested to see what you're what what you what you learn and develop and and grow and and what 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 sort of uh key uh key insights come out of this process that you're going through of of uh exploring community and exploring that concept because i i think it is you know just like uh just like i think real estate agents need to be adapting uh to the times and and growing and leveling up i think uh those of us who want to continue to be successful in business and to grow and get to make a mark in the world through uh through entrepreneurship and and all that we need to do the same we need to we need to be looking at you know what are, are we doing these aspects right are we are we uh playing at the fundamentals of, of business correctly and i think a uh, community is uh definitely core to that so so yeah love it i and i i, I could not agree more obviously <laughs> um zach hammer thank you so much for being on the show uh i i can't wait to have our next conversation absolutely me as well me as well thank you for joining us this week on Elements of Community. Make sure to visit our website, elementsofcommunity.us, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. If you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you like the show, you might want to check out our EOC Inner Circle where we deep dive with each guest on the inner workings of their community. We cover things like community model, profitability, and engagement strategies. You can join the inner circle at elementsofcommunity.us forward slash inner circle. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.